Hey everybody, welcome to Data Engineers Launch number 15 on the 15th of March. Today's topic uh, for discussion is introduction to Jenkins um, by Obi, one of our engineers that are not. I'm an organizer for this meetup. I'm hoping uh, to get some volunteers to help, help me out here. Um, Co-organizers get to network, <laughs> grow their careers, meet with people, and uh, basically uh, you know, help grow this community. Uh, we are part of a much larger community called Data Community DC, as you can see, made up of several different groups. By the way, Data Community DC is a nonprofit foundation. What do we cover here? We cover the um, get your shit together problem. Uh, in data, which is getting your data together, cleaning it, processing it, such that people can use it for something useful, such as APIs, reports, data science, machine learning, uh, et cetera. Data engineering um, it kind of uh, falls in the middle between software engineering and understanding a little bit about data analysis and uh, some data science stuff. Um, and so we cover a variety of different technologies topics here. Um, we do have some new faces. Um, so Josh, Stefan, uh, do you want to just, uh, and Chung, uh, do you want to just quickly say hi, uh, and kind of like, what brings you here? What do you hope to learn? Uh, yeah, I don't mind going first. So hi guys, my name's uh, Josh Barnes. I live in Phoenix, Arizona. I just graduated a, a full stack um, boot camp. Um, uh, prior to this, I was a vet tech and I worked in live music and events. So I'm excited to get started in this new career path as a data analyst with Anant. Great, awesome. Uh, Stefan? Hi, uh, I'm Stefan. Uh, I live in Vegas. Um, I also uh, finished Thinkful uh, a while ago. Um, I'm really interested in, uh, you know, learning all, all about uh, handling data and like uh, the new stuff I'm trying to learn here. So, you know, I'm excited. Great. And I see Chung. Uh, do you want to say hi? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, my name is Chen. I'm the second year graduate student at Georgetown University. I'm now living in Virginia. So um, I'm majoring in statistics and mathematics. And so my main goal is to become a data scientist. I think I have get a talk, get in touch with a role during the startup career fair and we do a good discussions. So I'm interested in the data engineering part too, because I think that's without a, <laughs> Without a um, good quality of data, no matter what mode, how better the model you build, it will only be junk in, junk out. <laughs> yep, awesome. Um, see, Lena, did you want to say hi? I don't know if you've you've been here before, but um, you want to just say quick quick hi, and it's up to you. Oh yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Marlena. I'm just sitting in on some of these talks. I'm currently um, in the field as a data engineer, so I'm just um, listening gotcha. to current topics that are going on. So, Great. In a Great. Welcome. Group rules. Uh, if you have a question, just ask it uh, on the chat. Uh, sometimes speakers will allow you to just you know talk in the middle of the presentation. It just depends on who they are. Be polite and courteous. Uh, you can use that as an opportunity to share what you know uh, and add on to what the speaker is talking about. This is a community. That means that we communicate, and communication means two-way, all-way communications. Our company, not, um, we help our clients and teams build uh, large-scale data platforms, uh, specifically with Spark, Cassandra, and Kafka. So we do this stuff all day. Uh, DataStax is a partner and a sponsor for this group. And so is GW University, who has given us venue space in the past and hopefully will continue to give us space after we return to in-person meetups. Uh, we have some local sponsors as well as some institutional sponsors uh, for all of Data Community DC that help make, um, well, right now there really aren't any budget shortfalls because Zoom is pretty cheap compared to 
putting on events with pizza and, and soda. And then we also do a yearly conference, which we did all remotely this past year. Any announcements for people looking for work uh, that have jobs to offer, any upcoming meetups, classes that you wanted to mention? Um, just a reminder, uh, Data Community DC, uh, it has uh, links to all of the different meetups um, in our network. And there's usually, uh, oh yeah, that's right. Some, some, some sponsors pay for a beer session, <laughs> not everybody. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, Data Community DC, uh, if you uh, follow their Twitter feed, you'll get some updates of the weekly newsletter as well. Um, and then you can go to any of these uh, different meetups to see what's happening. And then uh, this is a uh, weekly uh, lunch call uh, every Monday. Um, we don't have any, well, actually, you know, what I should put in here is that there will be a talk on Prometheus and Grafana, um, probably uh, late April, I've got a volunteer for that. And uh, we, we have some calls for a few other speakers where they're, they're just kind of finalizing some topics. But if you have any topics that you'd like to cover, um, this is an opportunity for you to maybe explore something related to data engineering and show it off. Uh, or if you've done something interesting, it's, it's a great uh, way to uh, show off your work and get reported. And you know, we put this on YouTube, so it's good for your personal brand and your career. All right. Um, let me bring up my, my outline just before I hand it over to um, Obi. I want to show everybody the uh, the backlog of um, of topics, uh, as well as what we've covered so far, um, and everything that we talk about, uh, we end up having a blog post for on uh, on the blog.anant.us, and there's a video generally posted uh, as well as some code. Um, so in terms of a backlog. A lot of different topics have been proposed, including Snowflake, D Snowflake DB, Delta Lake, uh, database build tool. Um, let's see. Da, 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 such Is there anyone who's, in, who's using IPv6 in production systems? Anybody who wants to say how much it impacts long yield? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, that's a good topic. We can bring that up uh, after the talk, Sachin. IPv6 and that could be impactful to our work. Um, the general itinerary that we've been following when we don't have um, speakers is we go through the roadmap for what it takes to become a data engineer, including programming, scripting, knowing about every type of database you can imagine, then learning how to process data in various different ways, uh, scheduling tasks and systems, uh, data operations. And actually, we're going to be talking about Jenkins today, different clouds, infrastructure, uh, and then new things coming up. Um, so we are kind of over here. We talked about NoSQL a little bit again last week. Um, so as, as people pick up different topics, um, we're just making our way through this roadmap. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to our uh, featured speaker tonight, uh, today, this afternoon or tonight, if you're, if you're somewhere else in the world, uh, Obi. Uh, floor is all yours. And let me see if I can stop sharing. There we go. All right, hello, let me just share my screen. There we go, that should be visible. Actually, let me just get the chat over on this screen. I generally prefer to take questions during the presentation in chat, uh, but if I am not currently speaking, you can also just speak up. Uh, so it's perfectly fine. Uh, as was mentioned, my name is Obi Anunnachi. I'm a junior engineer at Anant. Worked here for over a year now. Um, and I'm an aspiring data scientist. Um, and a lot of that is getting good with these other tools. So um, today we're talking about Jenkins specifically as a scheduling tool in contrast to Airflow, which we talked about two or three weeks back. Um, 
which is a scheduling tool that uses Python. Jenkins is technically built in Java, but we're going to talk about what it's meant for, how it works, and how you can use it as a scheduling tool if you want to, uh, and how it actually compares to Airflow in that respect. Uh, so starting off just with a general overview, Jenkins is an open source automation server. Uh, so you can automate builds, tests, and deployment using their tools. Um, and it's also a very good CI CD platform because you can have build triggers when you update your version control or whatever code base you're using. Um, you can have a rebuild and redeploy and retest um, whenever you happen to trigger it by adding new code. Um, but you can also build have builds that trigger on schedules um, and therefore you can use Jenkins as a scheduling tool. It works on all sorts of platforms, including Linux and Docker and Kubernetes. Um, and I think even several cloud platforms have their own Jenkins um, ones that you can use. So general features, uh, mostly because we did this for Airflow too. Um, so set up well for continuous integration and continuous delivery. It's definitely pretty easy to install um, and it runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac. Um, you can configure it via a UI and it has a bunch of plugins that can help you um, and it's a distributed system so it can scale uh, in order to have your builds across multiple computers. Um, okay, so just a little bit about plugins. They add functionality. Uh, so you can see some of the ones here. These are some of the most used, but you can see there's like nearly 2000 plugins uh, you can add to Jenkins. You can also write your own. Um, and when you start up your Jenkins instance, um, it gives you the option to just install the most used plugins or define a custom set of plugins that you want uh, on your platform. And you can install, upgrade, or remove new ones via the UI. All right, uh, so before we get into scheduling, we need to talk about what Jenkins does, essentially. Um, and the way that works is via a pipeline. You define a number of different steps or tasks that you want to complete um, in something called the Jenkins file. Um, and Jenkins will step through that, running each task one by one. So what it does is it defines a series of stages um, the ones in an example might be build, test, deploy. Um, these stages are executed one after the other. They can have different environment definitions. You define an agent uh, and that can be say a dark container or you can just choose not to define one and it'll just make an agent to do it. Um, they execute, specifically pipelines execute linear workflows. Um, they're defined by name in a Jenkins file split into stages, which are then split into steps, which are just a series of commands. Um, you can run your command line prompts, define shell, and then the command Python dash version, and it will print out the Python version currently installed on the environment. Um, you can see that. And you can also include in your Jenkins file wrapper steps like timeout or retry, which are also you can um, you can do timeout within retry and they're, they're nestable is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then there's also a post stage that you can include where commands can be run based on the outcome of the build. Um, so based on whether the other steps completed or failed, um, you can have code that runs afterwards. So build triggers, there is a list of build triggers when you're in the Jenkins UI looking to start a new pipeline. Uh, so you can see they are build after other projects are built, uh, which we will come back to because it's important in giving Jenkins some of that same functionality that Airflow has in its ability to build DAGs. Um, you can build periodically on a schedule. You can hook it up to um, GitHub or other version control. You can just turn it off or you can use um, scripts and webhooks to trigger builds remotely from a different machine. The first one we're going to talk about, because we're talking about Jenkins' as a scheduling tool, is, of course, the schedule. Uh, so you use cron notation 
to schedule your recurring builds. Um, just like Airflow, it does support some of these common aliases, hourly, daily, midnight. Um, so if you saw the last presentation about Airflow, um, in the schedule column, some of them were defined as hourly or daily. Um, but of course, underneath it's still cron notation. Um, you can define multiple schedules for irregular builds. If you define, say, a schedule that runs it midnight on every workday, and then run one that runs it at the end of Friday each week, um, you couldn't define that in a single cron statement. But by having two and putting them in that box we saw earlier, you can have it run on both those schedules. Um, and then a little bit about cron notation is that you can change whether you're trying to define every time period, like every five minutes or on the fifth minute of an hour, um, just with the slash. Or in this case, um, Jenkins wants you to use H um, just to help out with their spacing, essentially. Uh, so slash H slash or H builds every time period. So H20 star star star. Um, builds every 20 minutes, and then just having a number means it builds ev on that specific time every larger interval. Um, and then you can see the definition just of current notation here. It's minute, can be 0 to 59, hour can be 0 to 23, day of the month, 1 to 31, month of the year, 1 to 12, and then day of the week, 0 to 6. Uh, which apparently goes Sunday to Saturday, usually. Um, and then you can also use listen ranges to define more irregular sort of schedules. Um, so in this case, 20, 40, star, 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 builds at the 20 minute mark and the 40 minute mark every hour. And then you can also use ranges. In this case, the bottom one using one to five to build every week night. Uh, so we're defining midnight in the first two numbers because it's zero seconds and zero minutes, or zero minutes and zero hours into the day. So midnight on days one through five of the week, Monday through Friday. And then, so going back to build triggers now, uh, specifically we're talking about build triggers based on other projects. So when we talked about Airflow, we went through a lot of um, discussion of DAGs, uh, directed acyclic graphs, because Airflow builds one based on dependencies you put in your code um, in order to run your tasks in order so that all the dependencies are run before anything that depends on them is run. Um, and if you just had the linear setup of a Jenkins pipeline, you wouldn't be able to replicate that. But with this functionality, now you can. Um, so you can say you want this new build to trigger only after a certain number of other builds have completed. So you can tie them and have a merge. Um, and then you can also have a branch where multiple builds trigger on the same trigger after a particular build is finished. But the downsides of that, uh, especially compared to Airflow, which does a lot of this stuff automatically, is that you have to separate your code bases, at least the Jenkins files for them. Uh, you can have your code, say, replicated between a number of uh, a number of different projects. Um, but the Jenkins files that define which steps are going to run need to be separate. Uh, and then all your branches and merges uh, need to be defined manually through build triggers. It won't automatically build you a DAG. Um, like work, like, sorry, Airflow would. And then talking a little bit more about just the general comparison to Airflow, um, using this new, this build trigger functionality, both can define directed acyclic graphs of tasks that you want to perform. Uh, since Jenkins defines all of its um, stuff in the linear pipelines in Jenkins files, you can't dynamically define a DAG um, <coughs> in Go, <coughs> sorry, 
you can't dynamically define one in code like you could with um, DAGs in Airflow because those are written in Python. You can generate them dynamically in code. Um, and then in Airflow, DAG building only requires you to define your dependencies. Jenkins, you have to build it into your pipelines with build triggers. Um, functionality from the UI, uh, both Airflow and Jenkins allows you to trigger these manually. Um, Jenkins does not allow you to trigger specific steps from your pipeline, whereas the Airflow APIs allow you to run specific tasks by themselves if you want to. Um, and it's easier to use Jenkins to execute arbitrary code because you're essentially going through the shell. Um, whereas Airflow um, requires these specific Python interactions, OSs, in order to get any access to the shell. Uh, otherwise, you're limited to what can be done in Python. And then rather than a live demo today, we're just going to look through this pre-prepared one. So you can get a look at what Jenkins files looks like. Can you zoom in a little bit? Yeah. better much great okay um so this is the, like a simple python example for jenkins uh all it does is essentially create a um add two values function um it adds two values and if one of them is a string it concatenates them instead it's string cast and concatenates them um but it also has j unit testing um, which is actually why this is not a live demo because I had trouble getting that to run properly. Um, otherwise I would have just say, well, I actually, this actually ran into the same problem with Gitpod that uh, trying to run open source Cassandra in Gitpod does, um, which is that even if you run the service in the Docker file before the environment's properly initialized, um, you don't get all your ports open and everything. Um, so you can't actually like use the services. Um, Yeah, and those that are unfamiliar with Git, Gitpod is the web-based ID that basically makes it easy to quickly get started with stuff. So I appreciate the effort in making it work on Gitpod. Yeah. Yes, uh, we especially love to use it for demos because we can just give you the repository and you open it in Gitpod and are able to mess around. Um, we barely even have to include instructions, uh, but this does not quite work in Gitpod. Um, so then let's go past all this Docker stuff so we can look at a Jenkins file. Well, I guess first get a bit of the UI. It opens this one port, 8080, although uh, you might want to change that if you have other services that are running on 8080 uh, because a lot of other services do. Um, get your password out of this file. All right, this is connecting it to a GitHub repository. Um, they have you clone your GitHub repository to the local machine um, and then add it to the pipeline based on where it ends up in your file system. Uh, but I think it's possible actually to just connect directly to, um, to Git and have updates to Git be what triggers your builds. So the inside of a Jenkins file, pipeline, you define your agents, and then you start defining your stages. First stage here is build. Your agent is this Docker image based on this particular image, Python 2-alpine. And then in your steps, you define whatever things you're supposed to run. So you have your shell command that runs the Python file. And then you also have the stash command, which saves your results. And that's the sort of most basic pipeline. 
has exactly one step builds in between start and end. Um, you can see this in the UI, but when you add more, um, this time we're adding the test stage. PyTest has a uh, JUnit testing for Python. And now you can see we have two steps in our pipeline uh, that build one after the other. If one fails, you get a failed result out. Um, and uh, this is something I forgot to mention. Just like in Airflow, where you can see your history of runs um, with it took this much time, this stage failed, and therefore that's a failed run. This stage succeeded all the way through. Um, you can get the same sort of thing in the um, Jenkins UI, uh, which is good. So we're adding a final stage, the delivery stage to our Jenkins file. Steps, directory, do this. Start up your docking container. And so this is sort of the full Jenkins file that you might have. Um, and just like a Docker file, it's sort of important that you stick to the syntax. Um, but I don't think it's super important that you get all the spacing correct as long as uh, as long as everything's running correctly. So this is the final pipeline: start, build, test, deliver, end. So as you can see, you only get these linear pipelines inside the Jenkins app. Um, but if you define a number of pipelines have them trigger based off other pipelines finishing. You can have branches, you can have merges, you can define your DAGs um, inside of Jenkins and get some of that functionality that Airflow would have over it if not for this functionality that they added. All right. Awesome. Um, so we're, uh, you know, open for, for Q and A and, and discussion. Um, I think uh, got I already have one. What is oh. Docker's used here for? Um, so in that example that we just talked about, we skipped through a bunch of the stuff, um, defining that they're bringing up Jenkins in Docker in the first place. Um, but then also some of the agents that they're using are bringing up Docker files to deploy code to essentially. Um, so instead of say defining out an environment manually, uh, which you can do inside your Jenkins file, um, what they're doing is defining a Docker image that that code is going to run in. So each build stage takes place inside of one. Um, it was something I actually had to change because in my own testing of this tool, um, I just had it installed on a Linux machine. Um, so you don't necessarily want to use Docker agents for everything. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, this is a common practice in uh, CI/CD uh, tools. So, you know, GitLab, for example, has its own GitLab runners, and it's similar to Jenkins. There's Circle CI, Travis CI, um, and almost everybody nowadays, in order to run these different stages. Um, basically gets an image that you, so in this case, it was like Python Alpine. It will then put, it will inject your code into that uh, Docker image and it will run it. And you're not limited to using Docker images from the public. You can have your own Docker image. So there's an aspect of running the process inside a Docker container that makes it easy to encapsulate different types of builds. The other thing that Jenkins can also do is post build, or post testing in the Docker container, um, it can run the Docker container and it can do another uh, uh, you know, functional test, for example, using a Docker container. And then if everything works, okay, it can then publish the image for that Docker container to a registry, and then it can deploy that Docker container all the way into the cloud. So the Docker can be used in a lot of different ways inside Jenkins, but Jenkins is not, just for that. Jenkins, you can run it to pull down code for Java, compile it on that same machine, um, run it with Java, uh, do the unit test with Java, um, and then compile. Uh, and after everything is good, you take that jar package and you can publish it to like a Maven repository. 
So um, it's not just that Docker is, is, is used for these things. It, it's, it's an option. It's not like a mandatory thing. Does that answer your question, Gautam? All right, I guess, yes. Um, yeah, cool, awesome. Um, yeah, the other uh, thought I had was that there's, I, I feel like there's like a, a bit of an overlap between Jenkins and Airflow where kind of Jenkins is more on the um, get your code, build it, test it, run it, uh, test it again from a, from a functional side, uh, not just from unit, unit testing side, and, and everything is good, you can run it and you can deploy it. But what you showed today was that you can also just use it to run steps, and those steps could be anything. It could be data processes, basically, right? Data yeah. operations. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was basically what I was looking at, whether you could do the same sort of, because, I mean, when we talked about Airflow, I sort of views it, viewed it as a platform um, for that sort of stuff. And Jenkins' is a scheduling tool, I believe, should be able to do the same thing, so. Yeah, and I think for Airflow, it takes on the aspect of scheduling and takes it to another level with these DAGs, but it's not probably not the best solution for actually building and testing code. Right? You're assuming that the stuff that Airflow is running is good, is good to go, right? Yeah. So maybe like there's probably um, an overlap and I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Airflow has a trigger from Jenkins or Jenkins has a Airflow plugin that can basically say, okay, go ahead and start this, this, uh, this DAG, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's really in interesting about this stuff is that uh, it's free, right? Well, Jenkins has a commercial enterprise version, uh, but Airflow and Jenkins both have an open source version that, that, that works really well. And um, the thing is that this type of stuff used to cost so much money. Like you have to use Team City, or you have to use something called Autosys, um, uh, or you would have to basically fall fall back to using Cron to do these builds and deployments. And then obviously to to go to uh, production, you know, you have your other scheduling engines. Um, and I know that on the cloud that uh, there are DevOps tools and scheduling tools, but what makes it really fun and interesting is that you can play with this stuff locally. You can deploy to on-premise, or you can deploy to whatever cloud you want, and uh, you're not really stuck with anything in, in particular. Um, yeah, like like the the example process that I'm thinking, like to prove how these things could work together, is you commit code into GitHub. The thing, you know, let's say it's it's Spark Scala code, right? The Jenkins could basically bring it down. It could compile it. And it could then run that Spark code uh, through some unit tests. And if it's good, it could deploy it to a Spark cluster. And then basically trigger Airflow to then run the rest of the stuff, right? And you can, you can put a lot of different processes inside one Spark, Spark uh, jar. Um, what other thoughts did you have while you know, comparing these two, uh, OB? Um. Well, I really viewed uh, Airflow as sort of a, like set up for data engineering tasks. Um, so like in the Airflow webinar, one of the things that I wanted to look into a lot, but I had trouble with um, was that integration with Spark because I wanted to see um, how it work out for machine learning. Um, and like, I feel like while you could do the same thing with, uh, with Jenkins, it's sort of more It's more for that um, CI CD where you're changing your code and you have like tests you want to make and deployments you want to make um, rather than the sort of continual training process that Airflow might enable you to implement. Yeah, I mean, I, I work on a project where we use Jenkins to build, test, deploy, run functional test on the data. Uh, and then if everything is good, it it deploys it to a higher environment and it puts it on a schedule. So then that particular job starts. So they, everything is done inside Jenkins, but it's not like there's a complicated DAG involved. It's just making sure the same code works 
before it's deployed. And once it's deployed, it's on a schedule. And uh, if somebody wants to come and push a button to rerun that process, they can just go there and say run, right? So that's another thing that's useful for is um, giving uh, non-technical people, let's say, uh, like, a, like a, I wouldn't say non-technical, let's say a data analyst sees that the data is not refreshed, they could log into Jenkins and say, okay, rerun this process, and they would just get the freshest data and they can continue on doing, doing stuff with it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating stuff. The UI looks different from when I, uh, what I've been using. Maybe that's a much uh, newer version or maybe that's the enterprise version, like the green and blue stuff that you were showing. It looked pretty, looked pretty much, much better than <laughs> what, I, what I've seen. Yeah, potentially. Um, in the uh, my own exploration, I got a different UI as well. So, gotcha. Yeah, I think, I think that's the enterprise version, the pay, the pay me version. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Um, any any other questions or comments from from the community here? Okay. Um, Great. Well, thank you so much, Obi. I appreciate your time and in, in investment in, in coming up with this presentation. Uh, you know, maybe uh, later if we can figure out how Jenkins and Airflow can work inside uh, uh, together inside Gitpod, we can have a have a bit of a, an example that ties those together. So that'd be kind of cool. Um, excellent. So let's go ahead and um, pause the recording so we can just have a general you know networking and chat.